Hi, welcome to the Sankofa Pan African series. First, have you downloaded your free copy of our children's illustrated biography of African legends yet? Please do so if you haven't. Don't forget that we owe our children a responsibility to expose them to our history. Also, please help us to continue bringing you videos like this one by supporting us through Patreon or by buying me coffee. Please subscribe, share and like our videos. Our legend today is Lauren Hansbury, young, gifted and black. Lauren Vivian Hansbury was born on May 19th in 1930 in Chicago, Illinois. She was the youngest of four children born to Carl Augustus Hansbury, a successful real estate broker, and Nanny Louise, whose maiden name was Perry. Nanny Louise was a driving school teacher and committee member of her ward. In 1938, Lauren Hansbury's family bought a house in the white neighborhood of Washington Park subdivision of the south side of Chicago. Now, this incurred the wrath of some of their white neighbors who decided to take legal actions to force the Hansbury family out. The case went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court and the Hansbury family ultimately won the landmark case, but it took a long time. Now, her father died of a cerebral hemorrhage in 1946 when Lauren Hansbury was just 15. She, however, believed that it was American uh, racism which helped kill her father. Carl Hansbury was a staunch supporter of the Urban League and the NWACP in Chicago. Lauren Hansbury graduated from uh, Betsy Ross Elementary in 1944 and from Englewood High School in 1948. Carl Hansbury was a staunch supporter of the Urban League and the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, in Chicago. Lauren Hansbury graduated from Betsy Ross Elementary in 1944 and from Englewood High School in 1948. She attended the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where she was politically active. Her education was complemented by her parents' commitment to racial equality. The, the Hansbury's were highly respected members of the uh, black community and their home was visited by prominent black people including W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, Langston Hughes, um, the singer Paul Robeson, Duke Ellington and uh, others like uh, Jesse Owens. Both of Hansbury's parents were active in Chicago politics as well as other members of her family, were equally illustrious. Her uncle, William Leo Hansbury, was the founder of the African Civilization Section at the History Department of Howard University. Shawnee Perry, her, her cousin, was one of the first African-American women to direct an off-Broadway play. Now, Hansbury moved to uh, New York City in 1950 to pursue her career as a writer. She attended the new school and moved to Harlem in 1951, where she became involved in activist struggles and started writing for the black newspaper, Freedom. Her pan-African views that would drive her work as a playwright, was reflected in her journalism. Because as a journalist, she wrote in support of the Mau Mau uprising in Kenya 
had covered the case of William McGee, um, a black uh, man who was executed for the rape of a white woman after being convicted by an all-white jury, which spent less than three minutes to condemn him. Hansbury's career was driven by her desire for social justice. Unfortunately, only two of her plays were ever performed during her, li her lifetime. The first, A Raising in the Sun, was inspired by her family's struggles against their racist neighbors that I talked about earlier. The play became the first ever play written by a black woman to make it to Broadway, and it was named the year's best play by the New York Drama Critics Circle. Hansbury was just 29 at the time. Her second play, The Sign in Sidney Brunstein's Window, was inspired by her nine-year marriage, and it, it also deals with the theme of uh, race. The play ran for 101 performances and clo closed the day she died. Another of her plays, which was produced after her death, was Loblongs, which tells the story of Shembe, who returns to an unarmed African country from England for his father's funeral. In this play, Hansbury explores, explores um, identity, revolution, and colonialism. It was not the only piece that Hansbury had uh, left behind her. Her ex-husband, Nemirov, put the finishing touches to a number of others, including The Drinking God, uh, What You Use Are Flowers, and an adaptation of numerous works titled To Be Young, Gifted, and Black. The Pan-African Struggle fueled Lauren Hansbury's works which have continued to inspire people all over the world, even after her early death from cancer at the young age of 34. Um, she died on the 12th of January, 1965. Thanks for watching. Please download your free copy of our children's books and support us through Patreon or by buying me coffee. Also, Tell your friends about this channel. Thank you.